Okay, so today we're going to discuss about the microbial control. Okay, so this topic will be discussing about okay the method of your sterilization and we have the disinfection and we'll, we'll just be discussing here the difference between your sterilization and disinfection. And the different methods, these are the, the different methods actually that would enable your microorganism to be killed. Okay, so... We have the term sterilization. So sterilization is a process whereby you try to kill or destroy all forms of your organisms. Basta all forms, mean to say, regardless of what type does your sterilization. And we regard the sterilization here as the highest form of a killing process. Disinfection, on the other hand, just the killing of a specified microorganism. So, naka-specify lang siya kung anong klaseng microorganism ang pwede niyang patayin. Hindi lahat ng form. Not all of your life forms. So, we have the term disinfectant versus your antiseptic. So, disinfectant here would be your chemical agents that basically try to be applied in your inanimate object. So, may to say this is a chemical agent that is being applied to the surface, not in your skin. Like your bench top, table top, mga ganon. So that's your disinfectant. On the other hand, your antiseptic, on the other hand, is a chemical agent that's being applied only to your skin. Hindi siya okay, na-apply sa ating mga surfaces. Disinfectant should eventually be on the surfaces, not on your skin. Antiseptic is the one being applied to your skin. Okay, and anyway, your antiseptic also could not eventually kill here your spores, mga endospores natin, which consider here to be the highest form of uh, microorganism in terms of its resistance to the killing process. Okay, we have here the different factors that try to affect the degree of the killing process of your microorganisms. So we have here the different microorganism form, and um, they are arranged according to their the most resistant, ito yung pinakamahirap patayin, ito yung pinakamadaling patayin. So, we have here the prion, followed here by your endospore. Next, we have your mycobacteria. Then, we have your non-envelope, uh, non-lipid envelope viruses. Then, we have also your fungi. We have your bacteria. And lastly, we have here your lipid envelope na mga viruses. Okay, the... The prion here is a naked piece of the DNA. It resembles your our viruses, only that this one do not contain here a nucleic acid. Okay, and your prion is the one actually to try to cause here your neurological disorders. It could damage your brain. I try to affect our CNS, your central nervous system. It try to cause here your Creutzfeldt Jakob disease or even your mad cow disease. Okay, the next one na mahirap patayin because we have we have here the endospores. So notice here na pag mga protein ang kanyang structure, ito ay mahirap patayin. Okay, so pag mga lipid ang kanyang structure, so medyo madali silang patayin. Okay, the next one, we have your endospores. So spores here would be a combination of your protein, whatever the lipids. We have also here your carbohydrates. Plus, meron siyang dipicolinic acid plus your calcium. Making that one as highly um strong uh, structure or the membrane that would uh would have your difficulty with your disinfectant or even your sterilizer to kill them mycobacteria would be the next one because again mycobacteria would have very thick na mycolic acid so medyo mahirap din siya i-penetrate followed here by your non-lipid na mga viruses then finally fungi bacteria then pinaka susceptible Ito pinaka-resistant, itong pinaka-susceptible. Kasi sinabing susceptible, so they are prone here for the for the killing process. Madali silang patayin. So, we have yung pinaka-susceptible would be those having that uh, lipid na envelope na mga viruses. Okay, another factors that try to determine the degree of the killing process would be the number of your microorganisms. Or you call that one as your bio burden or your microbial load. 
So basically, this pertains here to the number of the microorganisms. So parang given naman yan, pag madami ang microorganisms, then eventually, mahirap silang patayin. So most likely, all you need to do here pag madami ang bio burden, so all you need to do here is to increase the concentration of your, okay, of our, okay, of our agent, or you could also try to increase the contact time. Contact time here is the time kung kailan mo siya in-expose or nilagay ang ating mga agents. On the third one, we have here the presence of your organic materials like your blood, your mucous membrane, your, your pastels. So, if your materials here that you need to be sterilized or disinfect, for example, contains blood, the mucous membrane, or pastels, then um, you need to remove those organic materials before you try to uh, subject that one with your killing process. Basically, because the presence of your organic materials would tend to prevent the contact of your kung ano ang materials mo na sterilized plus your agent. Okay, so it prevent the contact of your materials kasi may nakakoat sa kanya, may nakabalo sa kanya ng mga blood, mucous membrane. So if that uh, is the case, then eventually hindi siya masyado mapapenetrate ng ating agent because may mga organic materials. And therefore, when you have that, your materials to be sterilized or to be disinfect would have the organic materials, then you need to remove first those organic materials. And eventually, you need also to increase the contact time of your um, agent and also try to increase the concentration of your agent. Dadamihan mo, mas concentrated siya. Okay, another one, we have here the nature of the surface to be disinfected. Okay, so you need to check here what would be the type of the materials of your, um, the materials, what the type of your materials of your instrument, for example, that you need to disinfect. And of course, here you need also to select for the, for your agent. Kasi baka ang agent mo, saka materials mo, pag sinagsama mo sila masisira, okay, bakal ba siya? Ano ba siya? Plastic ba siya? So, you need to consider that one. Baka masira lang ang surface ng materials mo na din disinfect Like, for example, here, the endoscopic materials should not be out of leave. So, mga ganong consideration. You need to check for the materials. Number five, we have here the contact time. So, the contact time would be highly dependent on, okay, number one, of course, the, okay, the number of the microorganisms of the bio burden. And then another one is the type of the microorganisms to be killed. Like kung mga prion ba siya, spores ba siya, so medyo mahirap silang patayin. Therefore, tatagalan mo ang pag-sterilize or pag-disinfect. Okay, and another one is also the presence of your organic materials then. So ganun din, pag may presence of the organic material, the contact time should also be increased. Dapat medyo matagal para ma-penetrate at mapatay talaga. Uh, usually, your alcohol and betadine, so most likely that one would have your 1 to 2 minutes contact time. Okay, the next one, we have here the temperature. So, the basic temperature here for when you're doing your disinfection would be, or sterilization would be at the room temp, 22, 22 degrees Celsius. Um, with the temperature, so increase activity of the agent. If you try to increase the temperature, medyo effective siya. But if you try to lower the temperature, like if that one is a cold na, cold na temperature, so medyo hindi ganun ka-effective ang ating mga agents. Pero hindi naman sobrang init, sobrang cold na temperature because it will destroy the uh, disinfecting or the sterilizing capacity of your uh, agents. Okay, the next one, we have here the pH. So, for the pH, you need to consider here both the pH of the materials and the agent. Okay, or the sterilized. Pag sinabing agent, I'm talking about kung yung mga ano natin, sterilizer, or even your disinfectant, antiseptic, and all. So, you need to consider here the pH both of the materials that you are sterilizing, and of course, here the, the agent that you are using for sterilizing or, disinfect, or disinfecting. Another one, we have here the presence of your biofilm. So, biofilm is a group of the bacteria, a community of the bacteria. So, it's a multi-layered multi um, bacteria. 
and they're, they're being covered by a film. Kaya tinawag siyang biofilm. This biofilm itself try to provide here the shield or the protection for the bacteria para mahirap sila i-penetrate ng ating mga agents. So, if you are suspecting for the presence of the biofilm, so nang gagawin natin para ma-penetrate siya at mapatay mo talaga ang mga bacteria or the organism, then you need to increase the contact time, so tatagalan mo siya dapat, and another one is try to increase the concentration. Biofilm most likely try to be present or try to be formed with your catheter or even in your water pipes. Another one, we have here the compatibility of your agents. Okay, so you need to consider here the compatibility between the agents, like if you wish here na i-combine mo ang mga agents natin. Because some, hindi siya lahat ng instance na pag kinumbine mo, magiging greater ang effect niya. Baka, they tend to negate the activity of one another. So, nababawasan ang kanilang activity if you try to combine them, something like that. So, like for example, your bleach, your sodium hypochlorite, plus your quaternary ammonium compound should never be combined together because mawawala sila ng kanilang sterilizing or disinfecting ability. Okay, another factor, we have here your concentration of your agents. So, okay, the concentration of the agent you also try to... Also, try to affect here the degree of the ability to kill your microorganisms. Like, for the case of your povidone iodine, hindi siya dapat concentrated. Because uh, to concentrate here, po povidone iodine would eventually, nawawalan siya ng free, nawawalan siya ng free iodine. Ang free iodine kasi ang pumapatay sa, sa mga microorganisms. Like, Okay, so like for example, household bleach here, so you could have here 1 to 10 dilution lang. So all you need for that is just to check for the manufacturer's instruction with the proper preparation of your uh, of your agents as to gano siya ka-dilute, ba, gano ba siya ka-concentrated, what's the manner of preparation and all of that. Okay, then we have also here the classification of your okay, medical devices according to where it eventually kung saan siya pwedeng pumunta or pumasok sa katawan natin, kung hanggang saan. So, we classify here your medical devices as critical material if that one try to pupunta siya sa atin, try to break your tissues or even our vascular system, papasok sa ating blood vessels and all. The semi-critical, on the other hand, is a type of the medical devices where eventually would only up to our mucous membrane. So, ang non-critical materials, medical devices, on the other hand, we just have here up to our skin lang siya. So, we have here the different method of the disinfection or the sterilization of these different medical devices. So, for critical materials, so eventually, kailangan mo talaga ang pinaka-highest form of killing in the form of your sterilization. Okay, that uh, would eventually be the form of dry heat your moist heat, your gases, your ionizing radiation, and we have also here your uh, chemicals. But the semi-critical materials, on the other hand, require here your high-level disinfection. So, disinfection lang siya. Okay, so in the form of your 2% glutaraldehyde and your chlorine dioxide. On the other hand, your non-critical materials require here for you to uh, sterilize or disinfect, uh, basically disinfect that one with your intermediate level method of your disinfection, like in the form of your pasteurization and we have the use of your sodium hypochlorite or your bleach. And, you could all, and we have also here the low level disinfection method with the use of your quaternary ammonium compound, your alcohol, your phenol, and we have your iodophor or your povidone iodine for that. Okay, then we have here the different method of your disinfection and sterilization. So, that might be in the form of your physical method or your chemical method. Okay, the physical method is in the form of your application of heat. We have also here your filtration and we have also your radiation. For the chemicals, so this includes say, the use of your alcohol, your aldehyde, your halogen, your heavy metals, we have also here your phenol, your detergents, and we have your gases. 
Okay, then we have here the different physical method for your sterilization and disinfection. So the first one, we have here the use of the heat. Okay, the heat is most likely used here for those okay, materials which are heat stable. And to say, hindi sila nasasira ng heat natin. So the first one, we have here your moist heat. Okay, or your steam under pressure that's in the form of your autoclave. Autoclave is a sterilizer. So, we try to subject here our uh, materials primarily at 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes at 15 PSI or per square inch that one atmosphere na pressure. Another one you could use here 132 degrees Celsius here for 15 PSI only that would have 30 to 60 minutes na, na sterilizing time. Okay, another one, we have also here your dry heat in the form of your oven. So that's um, ideal for your oils or even for your glasswares. Okay, your dry oven is also sterilizer. The temperature for that is 160 to 180 uh, degrees Celsius here for 1.5 to 3 hours. Okay, then we have also here boiling. So, boiling on the other hand is not a sterilizer. So, medyo limited lang pwedeng patayin ng boiling natin. Not, hindi siya ganun ka-effective compared with your dry heat and your moist heat which are considered to be sterilizer. The boiling would just kill here the vegetative form. I mean to say the spores, the vegetative spores. Okay, you subject it one at 100 degrees Celsius here for 10 to 15 minutes. Another method here of your heat is your pasteurization. So pasteurization here is basically uh, for our food industries. We try to heat the food that's to kill your pathogen but not uh, altering the taste of the food. Okay, pasteurization would also be the same as our boiling, hindi siya sterilizer. Okay, and we have that Okay, you, you can subject here with your pasteurization at uh, 63 degrees Celsius here for 30 minutes. Or you can have here 72 degrees Celsius here for uh, 15 seconds. Okay, another method here for your physical method for your uh, sterilization and disinfection would be the use of your filter or the process of your filtration. We can filter the liquid. Okay, so liquid here in the filtration is basically for the uh, filtration of your pathogen found primarily in your vaccine, in your antibiotics, or your parenteral solution. So the filtration, we are using the pore size. Meron siyang pores. So ganun lang principle niya kung pag malaki, pag mali, malaki ang ating pathogen na size compared to the pore size of your filter, then eventually hindi siya makakalusot. Usually, gumagamit siya ng polyester, uh, polyester plastic, polyester plastic and cellulose acetate na filter. Polyester plastic and we have also your cellulose acetate, polyester polymer, I mean polyester polymer and cellulose acetate na filter which is a very thin na membrane. So, we have that. A pore size of 0.45 to 0.80, we're able to filter your bacteria, your yeast, or even your moles. But in the case of your pseudomonas, so medyo laitan mo siya, 0.22 micrometer pore size para matanggal si ating pseudomonas. On the other hand, small viruses would have you eliminated if you are using your 0.01 micrometer in a pore size. Another one, we could also filter the air with the use of our HEPA filter or high efficiency um, particulate air na filter. So, ito yung filter na ginagamit or nilalagay sa ating biological safety cabinet or hood. Kung saan tayo nagpa-process ng specimen when we're having like culture, you try to inoculate or to prepare your specimen. Okay, so... This filtration of the air is also ideal here for filtering the air in the room of your immunocompromised patient. Your HEPA filter most likely itong size niya, 0.3 micrometer pore size. Another physical method of your disinfection sterilization here would be your the way the use of your radiation. There are two forms of radiation. We have ionizing radiation and we have also here your non-ionizing radiation. 
Ionizing radiation make use of the gamma rays and your electron beams. Okay, so this is characterized here by short na wavelength pero high energy na radiation. And this is ideal here for sterilization of your disposable substances like for example your syringe, your gloves, or your catheter. On the other hand, non-ionizing radiation, so that's with the use of your UV light. So ito ay may longer na wavelength and that one would have a shorter or lower energy. So UV radiation is ideal here for sterilization of your surfaces. Like, sterilize mo ang room, for example, uh, so para mamatay ang mga microorganism natin like sa bed, was lahat sa mga surface natin, but not, okay, basically on the, okay, but on the surface. Okay, that's your nanionized radiation with the use of your uh, UV, UV light.